We are firmly entrenched in an era where it's completely acceptable to rehash, rework, remake and remaster media that we already loved decades ago. In the 90s and the 90s, we were in a golden age and we didn't even fucking know it. Everything that came out was new. The video game industry upheld itself with just constant, fresh and unique content all the time. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not against remasters and remakes, in fact I'm pretty fond of them. I get it, especially when it's a game that maybe came out in the PS1 or PS2 era originally and it's been rebuilt from the ground up with modern glitz and glamour, like Final Fantasy 7 or the Tony Hawk's remakes, the Resident Evil games. It's a win-win. Nostalgia is a powerful thing so it appeals to those of us that want to replay our favourite childhood games in the modern era and also it gives those just getting into gaming now the opportunity to play some of history's greatest games as if they were brand new. Where the lines start to blur though is when we get remakes where the original game doesn't feel old enough to warrant a remake. Demon's Souls, the Mass Effect games, The Last of Us. The Last of Us came out in 2013 on the PS3 and then it was remastered onto the PS4 and now it's been remade onto the PlayStation 5. Does that not seem a little bit excessive? You guys made these consoles that don't play the games that came out on the consoles before. It was your decision to make a PlayStation 5 that won't play PS4 games. So is it not a little bit of a money grabbing tactic to then remake it on the PlayStation 5? Anyway, I digress. Right on the cusp of that line that I'm talking about is 2008's Dead Space. It's a cult classic and a game that horror shooter fans claim hold up in a market dominated by Resident Evil. It was released at the end of January this year, 2023, as a complete ground up remake. Now the internet seemed pretty divisive over it, many purists on the internet say that it doesn't need to be remade and that this game still holds up the 2008 version. Well here's the thing, I've never played the 2008 version, so I'm diving into this one completely blind, let's fucking see what it's like. So the Dead Space remake dropped to the end of January on PC, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles. Now straight off the bat, if there's one thing that is an absolute must in horror titles, it is the setting of the atmosphere. Too many times have people attempted to make horror titles that are just not scary. And no, I'm not talking about the occasional jump scare here and there. Oh fuck! Or a section where you have to manoeuvre through an area with only a flashlight. Need it. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, it's just a picture. A truly scary horror game is one that that sets its tone so that you almost always feel uneasy even when things are calm and you know nothing bad is going to happen you're just never fully sure dead space does this fucking immaculately between the game's sound design the score the 3d audio and the colors used within the game dead space does not let up with this feeling of pure unease across its 12 or so hour campaign the one thing that is guilty of though is acclamation familiarization yes the game stays unnerving throughout but you kind of get used to it. Whereas at the start of the game, I would hesitate walking through almost every door. By the end of the game, I was diving into rooms like I was fucking Duke Nukem. Not like, not like I was fucking Duke. Just like I was Duke Nukem. The thing is though, I don't really consider this a negative point because there, there is basically no horror game out there that ever, ever achieves this. Every single horror game that you play, come the end of the game or, you know, the second half of the game, you're kind of used to the scares and you've become acclimated to the environment that you're in. The only horror game I've played where I pretty much never got used to the unease was Resident Evil 7, particularly Resident Evil 7 in VR. I think this was just down to the different sections of the game and each section having its own antagonist and each antagonist having its own way of scaring you. You never truly become used to what the game's going to throw at you. Dead Space isn't like that. Right up until the end of the game, you spend most of your time on the Ishimura mining ship and briefly on another mining ship that looks exactly the same as the Ishimura. And then the end game section is more action orientated than horror anyway. Graphically, this game is a delight. And really, I wouldn't expect anything else because even the 2008 version, if you play it on the PC with max settings, it still looks pretty fucking good. Look at this. I can't believe this shit is 15 years old. That being said, look at this. Jeez. 
the lighting, the particle effects, the detail, it's all spectacular. And the best bit is that the graphics are not at the detriment of the performance of the game. Probably because most of the game is set pretty much in corridors and rooms, and there aren't really any hugely expansive parts of the game. I played this on PS5 on performance mode, and whilst I didn't have an FPS counter on, it didn't feel like it dropped below 60 much at all throughout the game. It felt pretty solid. So those of you that have played Dead Space already will know that you play as Isaac Clarke, an engineer trapped on a mining ship called the Ishimura, which has become infested with necromorphs. Essentially human mutations who can only be killed by precision limb dismemberment. Now that being said, and going back to the graphics for a second, herein lies one of the fucking coolest parts of the Dead Space remake. As you blast away at these enemies, with every shot you blast away Wear a layer of flesh, revealing muscle, then bone before complete amputation. And my god, this is the filthiest, most beautiful thing ever. At the risk of making myself sound like a complete psycho, it is just incredibly satisfying. It's an incredibly satisfying mechanic, and it wasn't in the original. Like I said, I didn't play the original, but I did my homework, and other changes include Isaac, the main character, is now an actual voice-acted character, whereas he apparently was a silent protagonist in the original. Also, the zero gravity sections in the original were like predetermined pathways, I believe, that you could walk like you were on a rail or something. Correct me if I'm wrong, again, I haven't played it. That's just what it looked like on the original playthrough that I watched. But in the remake, you can freely maneuver about in the zero gravity sections, which is actually really, really fucking cool. But at the same time, it's like seriously brain meltingly frustrating. The reason is that the orientation is all over the fucking place. And in moments of heated combat in such sections, especially when your oxygen gauge is depleting, you'll completely lose notion of what up and down is. And while that's frustrating, into playing that's the truth that's what it would be like to uh, be fighting in zero gravity I guess so whilst yeah they can be some of the kind of more frustrating parts of the game the immersion actually feels super tight because you actually feel like you're out there in space floating around trying to catch your equilibrium so yeah really cool enjoy those bits the gameplay loop is excellent and I mean that's what you want from a game isn't it above all else you want the game to actually be fun to play and Dead Space is the pacing of the game is really really good it's got something about it pacing wise that I just think is missing from so many modern titles like it was something specific to this era of games when the original came out where it was just there was one point to the game that you moved slowly towards it isn't over polluted with pointless side quests to bulk it out or open world areas to explore but for ultimately no reason it's not that i don't like the breadth of modern games i love sinking my teeth into a hundred hour epic but there's just not enough straight shooting linear games anymore like dead space where you dive in and you progress through the game at a meaning for pace and you don't get burnt out and yeah you finish it in 10 or 15 hours but never once did you have to force yourself to pick up the controller because it was just good pretty much all the way through and it was okay with being that way so yeah i was absolutely a huge fan of that now you may notice just a few seconds ago i said the game was good pretty much all the way through pretty much all the way through there are maybe two or three sections in the game where i just thought nah this is no good. There's this part of the game where you have to find these infected, mutated things called wheezers, and you have to inject them with some sort of enzyme to stop them wheezing out poison gas. And it's a fine deviation from the standard gameplay loop for a few goes at least. The problem is, you have to find and inject eight wheezers. It's just way too many and it feels extremely laborious after like wheezer number four. And I get it, if there were eight wheezers in the original and they cut it down, purists would be complaining that the content had been cut. But coming in as a first time player and playing that section, I just feel like it really could have been halved in size. Like it just didn't feel fun to play just repeating the same thing. Another bit that wound me up was this section. Just after you clear out a bunch of anomalies in this area and turn the gravity back on, you're just overwhelmed by an onslaught of enemies. And you're still in this tiny track with nowhere to run but around the track. But also, it's not just standard enemies. It's a bunch of those with the exploding bellies that throw out the little leech things that prevent you from moving or shooting, coupled with a ton of these annoying fuckers with the exploding arms that if you allow them to get too close, will explode and one-shot you. So no where to run, enemies that slow you down and prevent you from being able to use your weapons, and other enemies that if they get too close, they explode and kill you. 
start a winning combo. This shit took me far too many tries, more than I'm willing to admit. And then when I finally did do it, well, stay tuned for that because I'm going to get into that in just a second. Lastly, I thought the end game section kind of just felt like filler. I don't know, like they made this cool game but didn't know how to wrap the story up so they shoehorn this part in. Maybe I'm being overcritical but it kind of just felt like the least fun part of the game. The final boss though, after that section was really cool. It was a, it was a fucking cool final boss, I'll give them that. Okay, performance wise then, you know, it's funny. I said the game's graphics are really, really good and they're not to the detriment of the performance. Generally speaking, the game runs really, really well. Only did I come across a couple of bugs in my playthrough but my god when the bugs came they came with the thunder so a second ago i was telling you about the section which took me way too many tries with when i was overwhelmed with exploding enemies i don't know if anyone else came across this bug but if you do make it through that section there's a room that triggers an automatic checkpoint now when i triggered this checkpoint it just so happened that in that exact moment one of these exploding boys was bringing down his exploding gauntlet arm this was just as the checkpoint triggered. So just as the checkpoint triggered, I was blown to bits. Now this sent the game into a fucking frenzy. Every time I reloaded and spawned back into the game, so too did arm bastard. Meaning every time I reloaded, I was insta-killed. I honestly thought this was game breaking. Even turning the PS5 off and back on didn't work. Finally, in the split second I got before I was blown to bits, I managed to pause and reload from a previous save. But of course, that meant I had to redo the whole fucking annoying section again. It was an ordeal. And, it was, and I did it live on stream and it took me most of the stream just to get through this section when you combine all the tries and then trying to fucking fix the bug. It was a rough day. That was definitely the worst of the two big bugs I encountered. The second one was kind of just funny above anything else. I was quite near the end of the game. I was in a room. There was a lot of enemies to deal with and I was killed. I heard the flatline sound go off. That tells me that I'm dead. But wait. I'm not dead. The game hadn't registered it, so I was able to wander around and explore the section of the game I was in without the enemies attacking me. They were still there, they were just kind of following me around. It was like they knew I was there, but they wouldn't attack me because they thought I was dead. I couldn't interact with anything though, so the fun wore off pretty quickly. I just found it odd that in a 12 hour playthrough, I only encountered two glitches, both of which were major glitches in an otherwise seemingly, you know, brilliantly optimized game. Anyway, let's wrap this one up. There's always a little bit of contention when we're talking about a remake, especially a remake like this, where yes, it's been rebuilt, it's a whole new game, but it tried to remain loyal to the original in almost every way. It's not like Final Fantasy VII, for example, or Resident Evil 2, where the whole game has been reconceptualized and plays completely different. For all intents and purposes, you could pick up Dead Space 2008 for £2.69 from CD keys and have 90% of the core experience that you will have with the remake and save yourself 58 quid. That being said, should we not reward remakes for being done correctly, especially in a world where remakes, remasters and ports have been flooded onto our game stores on almost a weekly basis, a lot of which are just lazy glow-ups to try re-empty the pockets of those who already emptied them for the same game years ago. Make no mistake about it, whilst Dead Space is mostly the same game as the 2008 version, this is a remake done right. For a first time player such as myself, it served the exact purpose it was built for and it was worth every penny of the £62 that I spent on it. This is a game I would have likely never touched had it not been remade and is that not in fact the point of a remake? Had I played the original though I could see why the question could be asked is this worth the price tag? Did it need remaking at all? Especially when much of the gameplay remains exactly the same but then again if the original wasn't such a good game it probably wouldn't have been remade would it? All in all whatever your stance is the Dead Space remake is a brilliant game and one I would firmly recommend to anyone who is a fan of these types of games. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10 and look if you ain't buying it out of stubbornness or because you don't want to spend all that money on a game that you've already played then just chill out because it's going to be £15 before you know it or it'll be on like Game Pass or something. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.